Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Samslow33 here, and welcome to Back to Reality, the show where we talk about all the Pokemon TCG topics you guys care about. And today, we're going to talk about my Pokemon TCG National Championships report for 2014. And before I get into anything else, I want to apologize for how late this video has been. I went to Nationals a month ago, and I have since not been able to post this, and I really was trying to get out here several weeks ago, but several things kept coming up, and I really just didn't have the time to post it. I was on vacation last week, um, I had a lot of plans, I was working on a lot of projects, and it really, I couldn't get it out, and I'm sorry about that, I really wanted to get it out earlier, but I couldn't. But at least it's here now. So of course, Nationals took place on July 4th weekend, for whatever reason that they keep doing that, I have no idea why, but it does, and yeah, it was in Indianapolis, Indiana, as always, and again, as always, I really just enjoyed this event a whole bunch. It was really a blast getting to play Pokemon all day, see the finals matches live, watch, you know, Jay Wits and Puka and all the others talk about all the, you know, Pokemon videos. That was awesome. Of course, meeting a lot of my fans, that was great too. I really appreciate whoever walked up to me and you know, said they watch my videos. I really do appreciate it, so thank you for watching and being at Nationals and saying hi. I really do appreciate that. Um, but yeah, of course, Nationals, very fun event. Let's get to my report on it right now. As always, Nationals was around a 13-hour drive. We stopped halfway through at a hotel for the night, then got there the next day. Once we got there, I went down to the convention center to register, and met up with some friends to test. The two decks I was testing at the time were Thunderous Deoxys Curum with Laser, and Virizion Genesect with Raichu. From testing, I didn't really learn much as to which deck to pick, so when I went back up to my hotel room, I still didn't really know what to play. Never something you want the day before Nationals. My main purpose for these two decks was they both had pretty favorable matchups to Evil Tall decks. With the Plasma deck, Thunderous does absurd amounts of damage to Evil Tall with Laser, Deoxys, and Muscle Band, and Curum and Deoxys are great backup attackers. Virgin Raichu, of course, has Raichu, which is a pretty solid counter to Evil Tall because of its Lightning type. Genesect is also just a pretty solid attacker against it, especially with G Booster. Both of them lose to Pyroar, Virgin is about 50 50 against TDK, and vice versa and neither have any standout great matchups outside of those decks, so which deck do I pick? Well, in testing, I felt like Plasma was winning just a little bit more of the time, so I was almost set on playing Plasma. But I felt less comfortable with the deck. I had played Virgin much more than Plasma, knew my list better, and had much more success with it in the past. In previous tournaments, I had always done better with decks I was more comfortable with, even if my matchups seemed worse against the field. So it was decided. I was playing Virgin Raichu for the event. Here was the deck list I played. I run 4 Virizion in this list, just because the turn 2 Emerald Slash is so important for this deck that clogging your deck with 1 or 2 useless Virizions is worth it to increase your chance of starting with it. At least they can fuel Raichu's Circle Circuit. Speaking of, I run a 2-2 Raichu line, of course for the Evil Tall matchup as well as any random Lugia EXs I end up running across. It's also a good non-EX attacker to force your opponent to take 7 prizes, which makes it useful in almost any matchup, and not just Evil Tall as some people might think. I run 1 Jirachi EX in this deck. It's a very nice card to get you out of a dead hand, in case you happen to have an Ultra Ball. It's also a great card in the late game to search out that Clutch Shadow Triad, Skyla, or N. Speaking of supporters, my supporter count is pretty simple. 4 N, 4 Skyla, 3 Juniper, and 2 Colrus. Playing only 3 Juniper may seem ludicrous, but Juniper often seemed to discard really painful stuff from my hand, and it would often either lose me the game by discarding all my resources, or I wouldn't even want to play it at all. I also think N, Skyla, and Colrus are all at the perfect counts, so I don't really have a desire to increase my Juniper count at all. Enhanced Hammer is just a really great card in this deck. It slows down those faster Plasma and Evil Tall decks to the point where you can catch up to them in board position and win more games than you otherwise would. 
it even makes Pyroar decks a slightly winnable matchup. I believe I've already explained the greatness that is Town Map in this deck, but I'll praise it again, just because it's so wonderful. It helps you get G-Booster out of the prizes, and it's even better in tandem with Skyla. If you have a supporter prized, and the only supporter you have in hand is Skyla, you don't even have to waste your Skyla getting a supporter when you can just take one out of the prizes. It's just such a great card in this deck. I'm running one double Carlos in this list. Its main use is on Raichu, just to quickly power it up without having to waste an Emerald Slash or Energy Switch. It can, however, also be used to discard for G-Booster, since it's two energy for one attachment. The rest of the list is very focused on getting an early game Emerald Slash. Four Verizion, four Skyla, three Ultra Ball, three Skyro, three Energy Switch. I very rarely found myself whipping the turn to Emerald Slash, and only three or four times in the whole tournament did I not get at turn three. Half of those because the game didn't even last that many turns. Now that we've looked at the deck list, all we have left is the main event. There were 889 masters this year, about 100 less than last year, nine rounds, and two pods, with the top 32 of each pod making it to day two. And I was in the orange pod. With so many rounds of this event, I've forgotten a lot of what happened in them, but I'll try my best to remember as much as I can. Round 1, I'm facing Michael with Evil Tall Garbodor Raichu. Game 1, he goes first and gets an attachment onto Evil Tall. I start Verizion, but I don't want it to get hit by his Evil Tall, so I search for another Verizion and attach to it. He gets an attack on my Verizion, I get an Emerald Slash, and a standard Verge and Dark Garb matchup ensues. I power up some Genesects, he knocks out my Verizion, and eventually, he starts missing a few crucial cards, and I win Game 1. Game 2 starts very similar to Game 1, but I miss a way to retreat my Verizion for the turn to Emerald Slash, and it gets knocked out. Not looking good. I decide I need to use Raichu to catch up in this game, so I attach a Grass to a Pikachu, and due to having to discard a Grass Energy, having two in my hand, and having two prized, I only end up Emerald Slashing for one Grass Energy to my Genesect. He retreats to a new Evil Tall and swings at my Verizion, and suddenly, things are looking horrible. I attach again to my Pikachu, and at this point, I really need to get a knockout on an Evil Tall, so I end, hoping to hit two basics and a Raichu to knock out his Evil Tall. Off my N, I miss it. Oh no. I think it's about time to scoop. As my last hope, I use Pikachu's Nuzzle to try and paralyze his Evil Tall. And I flip heads! He doesn't get a way to move his Evil Tall, and next turn I'm able to draw everything to kill his Evil Tall with Raichu, while also attaching to Genesect. After he KOs my Raichu, I attach to Genesect again, Energy Switch off the Verizion to it, and G-Booster his Evil Tall. After that, he can't get another attacker set up, and I sweep with Genesect. All I can say about that is hashtag Nuzzle. 1-0. Round 2, I'm facing Andrew Wambolt with Lander's Raichu Dusknorm. I'm already a little nervous playing a well-known player, but he's also got this crazy deck that I have no idea how to play against. In Game 1, I go first and start setting up my Genesect with Emerald Slash. Whenever he has a Duskull on the bench, I Red Signal it and Emerald Slash it. Except on one turn, after I've got two Genesect set up, I put aside the Duskull to get a knockout with my Genesect on a Landorus that's been spreading damage since the first turn. As suspected, he gets a Dusknor out and immediately Sinister Hands to knock out one of my Genesects. I still have my other Genesect, but can't get an out to G-Booster, so I'm forced to just Megalocannon a Landorus. He has enough damage to finish off this Genesect too, and I'm in desperate need of an attacker. I have a Verizion, but no energy left in my deck, and Hammerhead has spread too much damage on my field to try and piece together a comeback, and I lose. Game 2, I start Jirachi. Not the best start, especially compared to his Landorus with energy and two Dust Goals on the bench. To make matters worse, I miss an energy attachment. Jeez, what else can go wrong? Well, by my third turn, he already has a Dusknor out, and I just have one energy on a Verizion. I play an end to try to hit an energy in a Sky Arrow, which I also haven't drawn yet, and I miss the Sky Arrow. Then, I make a major on tilt play, and attach an energy to the Verizion with the energy on it. Even though there's enough damage on the field that Andrew can simply move all the damage to the Verizion and knock it out with Hammerhead. Obviously I should have attached the energy to my other Verizion in play, and I would have just gotten an Emerald Slash next turn. 
but I was so flustered with my terrible draws that I wasn't even thinking about that. After all my energy is wiped cleared off the board, he wins a few turns later by sinister handing all the damage to Jirachi, and using Land's Judgment with a Muscle Band to KO another EX for the win. That game, he also got a Shadow Boy Dusknor into play, but I never dealt any damage for him to move with the ability. At least my draws can only go up from here. Right? One and one. Round three, I'm facing a Virizion Genesect deck with Rose Raid and Raichu. The first thing I see is Rose Raid, so I seem to be at a disadvantage in an already incredibly luck-based matchup. But after I see Raichu too, I know he has to have sacrificed some early game consistency to fit all that in, which is the key to winning this matchup. Since this matchup is so dull and similar, I don't quite remember much of this game, but I know my suspicions were true, and he had trouble setting up early game, which allowed me to set up without worry and win the first two games. Two and one. Round four, my opponent is playing Aromatis Plasma. Game one, he goes first with an Entei to my Genesect. He has an acceptable turn one, with an attachment to Entei and a Spritzy down. I have utter garbage. I have energy for Genesect, but no Verizion, Ultra Ball, or even Enhanced Hammer in sight. All I can do is attach to Genesect and pass. He gets another attachment onto his Entei, and that Entei can easily end the game with another attachment. After being hit by Fire Fang, I need to top deck something to avoid being benched out. And... I miss. I attach, and he attaches and Grand Flames me for the KO. Game 2, he has a lot of trouble drawing energy to power up his attackers, or an Aromatisse for his Spritzy. He has one energy for a Thunderous, but that's about it. I have a Verizion pumping up on my Genesects, and I easily red signal all of his Spritzies when they come down. Once the Spritzies are no longer a threat, Genesect comes in and sweeps with Megalocannon. Time for our first Game 3 of the tournament. He starts off much better than last game, attaching energy and getting energy in the discard for Raiden Knuckle. I start off good as well, Emerald Slashing a few times. He keeps using Max Potion to heal off my damage from Emerald Slash, so I just sit back with my Verizion using Emerald Slash for a while. After I've Emerald Slashed two or three times, I certainly don't need any more energy in play, so I Red Signal his lone Aromatisse and Megalo Cannon it for KO, while also enhanced hammering the energy on his Thunderous. Then he does quite the questionable play. He sends up a Mewtwo EX with one energy, and attaches to it and X balls for 100. Those two energy are his only ones in play. So I take this perfect opportunity to Skylap or G-Booster and blow up all his energy. All he can do is try to recover with Raiden Knuckle, but thankfully for him, he hits a Tool Scrapper to get rid of my G-Booster. He has no Spritzy left in play, and only two energy, so I just wail away with Megalocannon. He slowly attaches to his Entei EX, but I use Enhanced Hammer to slow that down a bit. Once it gets two energy on it, I Shadow Triad for my G-Booster and Red Signal Entei and knock it out. After getting all his energy wiped off the field again, he has no way of knocking out my Pokemon, and I win. Three and one. Round five, I'm facing a Zoroark Evil Tall deck. Game one, he doesn't seem to be finding a Zoroark, or even much energy. He has like four Zoroas down turn two, but no Zoroark. I quickly start dispatching them with Emerald Slash, they've only got 50 HP. And with no Zoroark in sight, I set up plenty of Genesect, and by the time the Zoroark comes out, I just knock it out with Genesect and get the rest of my prizes pretty quickly. Game two, he doesn't even get a supporter, let alone Zoroark or Energy. I take knockouts with Verizion and Genesect until he has only one basic left. When he top decks nothing, and loses. After the game, he tells me Verizion Genesect is a really bad matchup for the deck, and that it's basically unwinnable. Well, with those draws, I don't think it really matters how bad the matchup was. 4 and 1. Round 6, I'm against Dylan Dreyer with Verizion Genesect Raichu. Alright, I'm facing a good player in a stupid mirror match. It's pretty much whoever goes first wins. Game 1, I call heads... Tails. Darn! Oh well, GG guys, I lose, scoop, done with this, I'm out, game over, totes done for, alright, I might as well play it out. Good thing I did, because he actually misses the turn to Emerald Slash. Alright, looks like I have the advantage now. I get two Genesects set up with Emerald Slash, getting quite the dominant board position. 
and he, understandably, doesn't have much of a response for it, and scoops. See? That's the other way you win this matchup. Your opponent draws badly. Game 2, he goes first again, but he gets the turn to Emerald Slash. Even though I get it as well, his board gets set up earlier and wrecks me with Genesect before I can really do anything. Due to Dylan scooping the first game and a quick game 2, we have almost 30 minutes to finish game 3. That's more than enough time for how quickly this matchup goes. Game 3, I'm going first, and I get the turn 2 Emerald Slash. To make things worse for Dylan, he doesn't even get the turn 2 Emerald Slash. Because of how far behind he is, he has just no way of coming back and loses. Isn't this matchup so fun to play? 5 and 1. In round 7, I'm up against Brizion Genesect with lasers. At least he has 6 dead cards in his deck this time. Game 1, he wins the opening coin flip. Oh well, GG guys, I lose, scoop, okay, enough with that. He actually ends up whiffing the turn to Emerald Slash, man, I've been getting lucky today, which allows me a great opportunity to take the lead with the first Emerald Slash, which I do. Once I have two Genesects set up, and he only has one, he red signals one of my Genesects and G-boosters it. His Genesect is undamaged, so I need my own G-booster to knock it out. I don't have Skyla, so I Juniper to try and hit it, and whiff. I don't put my Genesect in danger, so I just Emerald Slash onto a third Genesect. He attaches a Grass to Genesect, and Chorus Machines onto it, and G-boosters my Virizion. I send up my Genesect with a Muscle Band, and, and Megalocanon his Genesect for Knockout, leaving him with just one energy on Virizion. All he can do is Emerald Slash to a Genesect, which is immediately met with a Red Signal and G-Booster. He has no Scrapper for my Booster, and thus, his Virizion gets blasted straight in the face, and I win. Game 2, he starts Genesect, attaches to it, then Skyla's for Ultra Ball for Virizion. Um, okay. Thankful for my strange opportunity of being the main aggressor, I attach a Grass to my Virizion, and pass. He attaches again to Genesect, um, okay, and does nothing else in particular. Sure, I guess I'll take this game I totally should have lost because it's the Virgen Mirror Match with me going second. That's perfectly fine with me. Next turn, he does what I kind of expected and attaches a Grass to Genesect, then a G-Booster and KOs my Virizion. Afterwards, I simply attach a Muscle Band to Genesect and KO his. Now that I have energy in play and he doesn't, I proceed to sweep the rest of his field with one undamaged Genesect. This, folks, is why you always attach to Virizion over Genesect. 6 and 1. Alright, I'm 6 and 1. I just need to tie or win one of my next two matches to make it into day 2. Let's not royally screw this up, shall we? Round 8, my opponent is Kevin Baxter playing Pyroar Charizard. Well, that's one way to miss day two. Game one, he goes first and gets an attachment on Litleo. I start with Virizion, but I search for another one and attach to that, in case he has Pyroar DCE. Next turn, he does indeed get Pyroar DCE, along with the catcher. And heads. <sighs> Fine. I don't need to win this game anyway. After that, I send up a Genesect and attach to my other Virizion. Then he Lysanders my Virizion and kills it. I have Enhanced Hammer and an N, but he gets enough energy on Pyroar within the next two turns and wins on my Virizion. Game 2, I actually get an Emerald Slash off and power up a Genesect, which is followed by a Scorching Fang on my Virizion. My only option now is to G-Booster his Pyroar, and thankfully he doesn't have a Pyroar powered up and just sends up one and passes after attaching to a Bench Pyroar. This turn, I finally bench a Pikachu, and I energy switch to Virizion, attach to it, and Emerald Slash to the Genesect with G-Booster. In classic Pyroar fashion, it crushes my dreams by Lysandering my Genesect and knocking it out with Scorching Fang. Again, I hit him with Enhanced Hammer and an N, and afterwards I Emerald Slash onto Pikachu. Time to go ham with Raichu! Then he hits Blacksmith Energy and KOs my Virizion for the win. Alright, I can deal with one loss. I just need to tie or win my next match to make it in. 6 and 2. For my final round, I'm facing Evil Dolgarbador. Alright, I can deal with that. 
Game 1, I'm going first. Very important in this matchup. I get the turn 1 attachment onto my active Verizion, which is really all you need to know I did this turn. His turn 1 is just as exciting as mine, except he benches a Trubbish as well. I get the Emerald Slash with Muscle Band onto Genesect. He attaches a DZE to Evil Tall and goes for a Catcher and gets Tails. So he just hits my Verizion with Y Cyclone onto another Evil Tall. He just has a Trubbish down, so I Red Signal it and Emerald Slash to another Genesect. He sends up an Evil Tall, benches a Trubbish, and KOs my Verizion. I would Red Signal his Trubbish, but his Evil Talls are very big right now and I need to handle them. So I Megalo Cannon his Evil Tall for KO. He sets up a Garbodor with Float Stone and KOs my Genesect with Evil Tall. With my second Genesect, I attach a fourth energy and a G Booster and KO his Evil Tall. He has an Evil Tall in play, but no energy, so he scoops this game. Game 2, he gets the standard start of attaching to Evil Tall and benching a Trubbish. I make the same play of starting with a Verizion, but searching for another one and attaching to that. He goes for another Catcher Flip on my Verizion. Tails! Ooh, not great luck with those Catcher Flips. So instead, he just Evil Balls my Verizion. I attach again to my Verizion, but I miss my Sky Arrow. Wait, you can miss turn 2 Emerald Slash with this deck? It's been so long since it happened that I forgot. On his turn, he knocks out my Energyless Verizion with Y Cyclone. On my turn, I get an attachment onto a Pikachu and Emerald Slash with a Band to Genesect. He gets some more energy in play and Evil Balls my Verizion for a decent amount of damage. On my turn, I retreat to Genesect and Megalo Cannon his Evil Tall for KO, hitting another Evil Tall for 20. He then Evil Balls my Genesect for KO, going down to two prizes. On my turn, I attach to Raichu and play N. He does have an Evil Tall with two energy on the bench, and all I have is a heavily damaged Verizion with two energy, so I'm not in that great a position anyway. Regardless, I Circle Circuit his Evil Tall for KO. On his turn, he plays Catcher, Heads! He brings up my Verizion and KOs it for the win. Alright, down to Game 3 of Round 9. Whoever wins this makes it in. If we tie, I'll make it in because of my godly resistance, but I'm not sure about him. I'm going first, so that's a big plus. I get the turn 2 Emerald Slash without Band, while he gets a turn 2 Evil Ball. His field is 2 Evil Tall and 1 Trubbish. On my turn 3, I Red Signal his Trubbish, attach a Band, and Emerald Slash it for KO. This was probably a mistake, because he doesn't bench another Donny X all game, just a third Evil Tall. For the rest of the game, he never goes too aggressive, and keeps his energy even for all his Evil Talls with Y Cyclone. He does knock out my Verizion this turn with a fresh Evil Tall. I have two Genesex powered up, a Raichu on the bench, and no access to G Booster or Muscle Band, but I do have a Juniper and a Plasma. My best bet for knocking out an Evil Tall is Red Signal the one with 50, and Juniper hoping for the Muscle Band. Off the Juniper, I... miss the Band. Rats! All I can do is hit the Evil Tall, putting it at 150, and hitting another Evil Tall for 20. On his turn, he can't get enough energy to KO my Genesect, so he Y Cyclones to another Evil Tall. On my turn, I Red Signal another Evil Tall, and BAM! Time is called! Uh oh, this could cause problems. I mess up right here by thinking I can actually get all six of my prizes at this point, but it turns out I can't, so I make a few questionable plays in the next few turns. I have a Raichu on the bench, but no energy on it to attack so I just Megalo Cannon to deal 100 to the active, and knock out the one on the bench. Turn 1. He finishes off the Genesect he hit last turn with Evil Ball, and goes down to two prizes. Turn 2. I have no chance of winning, so I go for the tie. I send up a Verizion with one Grass Energy, and pass. Right after that I realize I should have just sent up Raichu, but knocking out this Verizion is going to be really hard for him. Turn 3. He plays a Pokemon Catcher! Oh, come on. This is really what's going to decide this game? A coin flip? I have a Jirachi on the bench, so he doesn't need anything else but the heads. We're the last match still going at the top tables, so everyone's crowded around to see this match, and it's coming down to a coin flip. You can be sure they'll start screaming to the heavens no matter what comes up here. If he flips heads, he makes cut, and I'll bubble at 6-3. and three. If he flips tails, 
I'll make it in through resistance, and he most likely won't. He rolls the die, and he gets, uh, heads! Oh my god. I just missed day two of nationals by a freaking coin flip. Are you serious? <sighs> God, I was six and one. Then I lost my last two matches. I thought I might be able to make it to day two, even make top 16. But nope, I got screwed out of that by the result of a die roll. I'm sure I sound really salty right now, but I think I have a pretty good right to considering I missed day two because of a coin flip. Especially since I was six in one two rounds ago. Uh, oh well. Nothing I can do about it now. I'm 44th in the orange pod, 85th overall, getting me nine packs and 50 championship points. Not like the points get me anything, but they're good for bragging, I guess. Overall, I'm pretty happy with my deck. I felt like my deck list was close to perfect for this deck. Very consistent and focused so much on that Skyla engine that I love so much with this deck. Apparently, there was a lot more fire decks in the blue pod than there was the orange pod, so I felt my deck had pretty good odds at getting me today too for what the field was. Since I have nothing to do on Saturday, I joined the Championship Point Challenge, which costs $20, but you get a free playmat which is really the only reason I played. And the playmat is definitely worth it. It looks just like the winners and top 8 playmats, but without the words that say top 8 or winner, obviously. And all of them look really cool. I suppose I could win both this championship point challenge and the one tomorrow to get my invite, but I'm definitely not expecting that to happen. The worst part about this is that it's 9 rounds. 9 rounds! Who wants to play a second set of 9 rounds within the span of 2 days? Thankfully, you only need to play 1 round to get the playmat, but as long as I have a chance at prize packs, I figure I'll keep playing. For this event, I decided to stick with Verge and Raichu, since it's one of my favorite decks to play, and again, I'm very comfortable with it. The only change I made to my list was taking out an energy switch for a tool scrapper to better counter Evil Dark Garbodor decks. Since I'm sure you're tired of me reporting matches, I'll just give you the name of the decks I faced and if I won or not. Round 1, I faced a Pyroar Charizard deck and lost 2-0. I kind of expected some Pyroar to be here after Michael Pramwat was first seed in the blue pod with the deck and later got second place with it, but I still enjoy playing Virgen and it was what I was most comfortable with, so I still thought it was my best choice. Round 2, I believe I faced a Parisian Genesect and won, lost, then won. Round 3, I faced a Malamar Sableye Magnezone deck and won 2-0. It was a disruption deck, but it wasn't all that well built. It didn't have any Getsis or Hooligans, just Team Flare Grunt, and it had some weird supporters like Pokemon Center Lady. Virgin also tends to crush decks like that. Round 4, I can't remember what I faced, but I know I won. Round 5, I faced a local player, playing Evil Tall Darkrai with Crushing Hammer. I won, then he won, and Game 3 barely started, so we tied. Game 1, he flipped 0-4 on Crushing Hammer flips, which especially early game would have won him that game. Oh well, that's Crushing Hammer for ya. Round 6, I'm against my second Pyroar Charizard deck, third if you count the main event. I lost Game 1, then actually managed to win Game 2, and Game 3 barely starts, so we call it a tie. Round 7, my opponent's playing a Plasma Curum deck. Game 1, she wins, Game 2, I win, and Game 3 never finishes, so it's a tie. Nice. Three ties in a row. I go the entire main event without tying once, then I get three in a row in the CPC. I felt like I was actually a fast player who knew when to scoop and all that jazz. Nope. Round 8, I can't remember what I faced again. I'm sorry guys, it was 18 rounds. I was bound to forget a few of them, but I know I won. Round 9, I faced a Speed Lugia deck that sorta of wasn't Speed Lugia. It had Roller Skates, Bicycle, and 4 Chorus Machine, but it had a pretty decent Thunderous focus. As for the match, I won 2-0. You'd think this deck would crush Virgin, but he didn't draw all that well, and Raichu also came in pretty clutch by KOing Lugia with weakness. 
So I finish 5-1-3. My same point value as the main event, getting 24th place, which gets me 5 packs and 30 championship points. And of course, that sexy, sexy playmat. Now the question is, what the heck do I do with all these packs? After these events, I'm totally out of the running for a world's invite, ending my season with 235 championship points. That means I've got to play in the last chance qualifier to make my invite. I figure since it's in Washington DC, three hours from my house, I might as well play in it. Commence vigorous testing phase. And there you have it, my Pokemon TCG 2014 Nationals report. I hope you all enjoyed. Certainly it was a little, you know, saddening missing out on top cut with those circumstances, but you know, making a top 128 of Nationals, a tournament with 800 plus people in it is not, definitely, definitely not something to slouch about. I mean, top 128 is definitely nothing to complain about, but I would have just preferred to make top cut in all honesty, but who wouldn't? Um, as for what, when my next video will be, hopefully it will be soon. Um, I really want to get this channel out of its, you know, big hiatus thing that really should have ended a long time ago. Um, I certainly have another, I've been working on this video for so long, it's also, you know, it's 30 minutes long, really big video. One of the reasons it was so long to make was just because how long it was, not just because of all these things. Like, I would have gotten it out last week if not for how much work I expected to put in it, which it, I did not think it would take this much, but it did. Um, I have another, I do have another video game series coming soon, so be sure to stay tuned to that. I'll probably have a few more card of the days, try to get some more battle videos out there. I've been lacking on those, but I realized, but I will try to get them out there. I will have another mix-up or back to reality soon. It'll most likely be either a Furious Fist um, set review or um, a review on a certain deck from Furious Fist. I'm going to guess the Furious Fist review because that's easier for me. You know, to do, I don't have to test enough of Furious Fist when I have to test, test for the last chance qualifier. But yeah, that will be hopefully in a few weeks. And of course, as I said, video game video and card of the day will be happening most likely soonish. Maybe I might not have a video next week, but the week after that, I should possibly. Maybe if Worlds doesn't get in the way too much, I will also have a pre-release video up in a few days if I remember to post it. Like I didn't for the last several pre-releases for Furious Fist pre-releases in a few days so so make sure to watch out for that some last congratulations to the winners of the event uh, of course Brandon Salazar with Landers Mewtwo Garbodor uh, Andy Younger with his Virzion Genesect deck pretty much the same thing I played and of course Ishan Jagiasi for playing his Empoleon Meltank deck as you know Ishan is one of my friends and people I've played with and testing partners and I really congratulate him for winning nationals especially with Empoleon that's Great for him, congratulations on your 1,000 plus championship points, however the many heck you have. And good luck at Worlds to you, and I hope to see you all, you guys, at Worlds if you were going. Again, I will be there, be sure to say hi, wearing my nice Pikachu hat. Um, I'm sure it might be easy to find. And other than that, that's all I got. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Later.